Welcome, everybody. This is Miguel Gonzalez. I'm your host. You've tuned in to Truth to Live By, the radio and television broadcast ministry of Reasons for Faith International Ministries. Uh, you've probably noticed by now that we are using a different format today. Usually you hear me preaching. Today we're actually going to uh, dialogue with a special guest of ours. I have with us uh, Minister Wesley Blunt, Jr. He's Associate Minister at the Greater Salem City of God Church here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And he received his Master of Divinity from Andover Newton Theological Seminary in Boston. Correct. 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 Welcome to the program, uh, Wesley. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, today, um, Wesley and I had been talking previously and we had been discussing what uh, the theme of the program would be and, and uh, uh, we decided that, that faith would be the topic that we would spend some time considering. Uh, we were thinking about a title that we were going to give uh, this program and uh, uh, Wesley came up with a fantastic name, and I'm actually probably going to end up borrowing that name some p sometime in the future. Yeah. Uh, the, the, he's going to be here this program and next program, and we've entitled this uh, short series, Faith Under Construction. Mm -hmm. And we've essentially broken down this theme into four points. Today we will look at two of them, and tomorrow we will look at, uh, or the next program, we will look at the other two. Uh, today we'll be, we are going to be considering the giants of the faith. We will be looking at Abraham and Moses. Uh, we will be talking also about the evidence of faith. Uh, in the next program we will be discussing the testing of faith and reaping the benefits of faith. Uh, so welcome once again, Wesley, and Thank let's you. go ahead and jump in it because half an hour just flies by. Oh yeah. Uh, I wanted to first uh, tell our viewers that faith is not only something very important because we know that without faith it's impossible to please God but scripture actually commands us mm -hmm. uh, to have faith. Exactly. Uh, in fact a very short verse mm -hmm. in Mark chapter 11 mm -hmm. verse 22 mm -hmm. Jesus said have faith mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Have faith in God. That is a command. Mm -hmm to have faith. Exactly. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the giants of the faith. Mm -hmm. And you and I discussed earlier and we decided to speak a little bit about Abraham and mm -hmm. Moses. Mm -hmm. uh, Abraham being essentially the father of faith, mm -hmm. our father of faith. Exactly. Uh, talk, talk to us a little bit about well, Abraham. Well we have to, when we look at Abraham, Abram, uh, we have to understand that he did something that uh, a normal person probably would not do. One of the things that he did, he took heed to what God had spoken to him and he was able to move out uh, not really knowing this God but it was something about the sound, that spoken word that was different that compelled him to move out. Um, it's strange sometimes to, to move out um, not knowing what's going to happen. And, in and you know, in, in Abraham's case, mm -hmm. here's a man who's hearing from a God he did not know. Did not know. This is a God he did not worship. Mm -hmm. He grew up in a pagan uh, uh, culture mm -hmm. uh, where the God of Scripture was not the God they worshipped. Not at all. Yet this is the God that comes to Abraham and says to Abraham, mm -hmm. I want you to leave your country, mm -hmm. everything that you hold in esteem mm -hmm. and go to a place that I will show you. Exactly. And then even tell him concretely where he was going. No. What did and that, and, and, and that's, a strange, that's a strange thing that, that, that God does. Oftentimes he would tell you to go and the person may not know where God is sending that, him or her. That person may not understand right now what is about to happen. And in the case where Abraham Abraham did not know what was going to happen, but at the time we had the verse here that we, we walk, he was walking by faith, not by sight. Right. And so he began to walk in what God had already ministered to him and told him to do. And so by doing that, he began to reap the blessings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that God had for him. Mm -hmm. It takes, I don't know that 
we fully understand uh, perhaps what transpired between God and Abraham when God called them. Mm -hmm. uh, I know many Christians today who, who are Christians. Mm -hmm. They're brothers and sisters in the Lord and they have been for many years and they're somewhat mature in the faith. Mm -hmm. And I know that oftentimes, even as Christians, and even as people who have already experienced the grace of God, mm -hmm. who have been born again, right. who are in the process of sanctification, which is this faith under construction, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we struggle yes. still mm -hmm. to step out in faith mm -hmm. and do what it is that God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. yet, fa yet Abraham, at the disadvantage of not even knowing the God who mm -hmm. called him, he left. Yes. He left. He and that wasn't the only thing mm -hmm. that he was called to trust God on. Right. What else was he called to oh, trust God Oh, he was God called to, uh, to trust God on the fact that, you know, being 100 years old and his wife at the time was going to have a child. Well, what did he do? He laughed. He That's thought right. it was funny. Yeah. His wife also laughed because they could not grasp what God was about to do in their lives at that age. Well, what does that say? Well, that says that God can operate at any time, don't care how old you are, the condition you may be, when he speaks, it's going to come to pass. That's right. And we have to believe that and understand that if we walk in it, then everything is going to come to pass. And he and yeah, he laughed. Mm -hmm. And we know that God operates on a different timetable than we do. Mm -hmm. And Abraham learned that. Mm -hmm. As exactly. a matter of fact, mm -hmm. I think Abraham and Sarah clearly doubted that God would fulfill their mm -hmm. promise. Exactly. And they stepped in and took matters into their own hands. Mm -hmm. And as a result, mm -hmm. Sarah had a child, but it wasn't the promised child. It wasn't a promised child. And you know what? One of the things that that amazes me about Scripture, and that's one of the reasons why I believe that the Bible is the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Even the characters that are spoken of in Scripture, their weaknesses, their sin, mm -hmm. their failures are discussed. Mm -hmm. Abraham, listen, and we can't look down on Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham was nothing more than a human being like you and us. Exactly. He failed like we as Christians fail. He mm -hmm. sinned like we as Christians sin. Mm -hmm. But the point is that he was still a man of faith. A man of faith. And he was willing to do something that, in all reality, how many of us would do even today, after knowing the Lord for years? Yes. We would find it to be a challenge. For the average person, if God were to tell that person, I want you to leave, I want you to leave your family, your land. Now, understand that person may be educated, have the, a wonderful job, and then God comes in the midst of all of that and begins to frustrate the person and tell them to leave. No, the, the, the average person uh, will have a difficult time accepting that mm -hmm. because they are still uh, living in Egypt. And I'll yep. tell you that one of the sad things about the Christian, you know, the Christian experience mm -hmm. is that oftentimes we're willing to serve God, mm -hmm. but we're willing to do it on our terms. Exactly. Not realizing that if that's the way it's going to be, we are going to forfeit the mm -hmm. blessings that mm -hmm. God has in store mm -hmm. if we obey. Mm -hmm. And that when we start operating outside of God's will, mm -hmm. it's not God working. No. It's us. It's us. And how much can we actually accomplish if God is not part of the process, Nothing. if we haven't partnered with God? Mm -hmm. And that's very important that you just said that because that's one of the things that we have to learn to do. Because operating in faith, there's a cost associated with that. And so that cost could be you leaving. That cost could be you doing strange things that may be unfamiliar to you or any other person out there. And we have to understand that if we're gonna walk in faith and we're gonna be challenged by God, mm -hmm. um, just to see where we stand, you know? And he does it for our own good. For our own good. For our own, he to help wants us our grow and grow. to mature. Yeah. 
And that's what that is all about, yeah. that faith. And when that faith comes in, what are you going to do for me? Because the higher that God takes a person, they're going to have to start really operating in that faith. Because Independence of him. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now let's talk a little bit about Moses. Mm -hmm. Because Moses was a great man of faith too. In fact, I want to read a passage in Hebrews. Uh, and, and, and point out a couple of, of things that, that the author of Hebrews tells us. In Hebrews chapter, 20, uh, chapter 11, verse 24, it says, By faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Mm -hmm. I don't know many people who would refuse to be known yes. as the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. Right, right. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather to, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ, of Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ wasn't born till right, exactly. thousands of thousands years, years later, later. But he already, mm -hmm. as, a great, as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking mm -hmm. ahead mm -hmm. to his reward. And then it says, by faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king, king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Saw him who was invisible. Everything that he gave up, mm -hmm. he gave up at the moment. Things that were tangible, mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. for things that were future, not seen. Not seen. Faith. And that's what it's all about. Trusting God that what he said he would do mm -hmm. and the rewards he would give you, mm -hmm. he's faithful. Mm -hmm. And that had really marinated in his heart. Oh, yeah. To do that. Yeah. And, you know, oftentimes one of the things that we have to learn to do is to train our minds to see what our eyes cannot. And so basically, although his eyes saw all of that, and that's what He's, Satan wanted him to see. Exactly. He wanted him to see all of that. Sure. I can show you this. I can give you this. I can give you that. You're going to leave this for that? But and God. What, and what's that? But, uh, you can't see it. It's not he, tangible. It's, not ta it's all the way, you know. Exactly. But in the end, he's going to reap all of that. That's right. That he did not see. Listen, and, and if he reap nothing else. Mm-hmm. He is today in the presence of the Almighty God. Exactly. And he will live in heaven in the presence mm -hmm. of God for eternity. Forever. If there was nothing else to be had, mm -hmm. isn't that enough? That isn't is that worth more than all the treasures of the, Egypt? Oh, yes, it is. And the short pleasure of sin? A lot more. A lot more. But he stepped out in faith. He stepped out of faith. And that's what we have to learn to do. If we Absolutely. want to walk and Moses' footsteps, if we want to walk in Abraham's footsteps, we have to learn to do that. Because see, oftentimes we are just caught up in the now, you know, what we can see now. Mm -hmm. But we have to get our thinking out of that to understand what's happening on the other side in the future. Because you know how we are as humans, mm -hmm. and we're just mm -hmm. human. As humans, you know, we have to see it. Mm -hmm. And you make a point too, because mm -hmm. if you think of this, um, For Moses, mm -hmm. we can do, or let me rephrase, what Moses did for God, we can do. Mm -hmm. Moses, again, like Abraham, partnered with God. Paul partnered with God. Oh, God. Listen, yeah. Paul, Moses, Abraham, none of those individuals were the ones who actually did the work of God, it was God doing it through them. Through them. They partnered with God. Partnered with Him. And their part of their partnership, all they were required to do was to have a submissive mm -hmm. heart mm -hmm. and give God the room to do what it is that God does. Okay, exactly. And Paul was transparent in that mm -hmm. way. He said, mm -hmm. listen, mm -hmm. I don't, it's not me. Mm -hmm. It's God. God. It's working. God. God Lord. working in them. Exactly. Let's talk a little bit, Wesley, about the evidence of faith. Mm -hmm. What can we say about the evidence of faith? Well, for me, uh, the evidence of faith is, faith is basically when it looks impossible, but yet you're walking in it. Mm -hmm. 
wh whatever whatever that may be. And you know, during that time when I was thinking about that, this here, I was just thinking about like David and Goliath. Here you have a little kid here who's gonna bring down a giant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other people, I'm probably assuming, laughed at him because mm -hmm. he was a little boy. But one thing he had was a God mm -hmm. who was mighty in battle. Mm -hmm. And so when that came forth out of him and he began to do what God had invested in him and he had given him that power to do, then things change. Yeah. It's amazing what it is amazing what uh, uh, God can do through you, and you, you brought it up, that open heart, being submissive, that open heart where he can come in and direct your path. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11, 1 defines it this way. Mm -hmm. Now faith is being sure, mm -hmm. is being sure, sure of what we hope for mm -hmm. and certain of what we do not see. Mm -hmm. That's an that's what a definition. I mean, sure of what we hope for, mm -hmm. future, mm -hmm. and certain of what we don't, don't see. see. That is don't walking see. by faith. faith. I mean, faith. you know, and we often, you know, uh, when I talk to Christians, we often discuss the fact that uh, we believe God. Mm -hmm. We believe he's a God that keeps his promises. Mm -hmm. We don't question our salvation. Mm -hmm. We don't question his ability to save us. No. We don't question his ability to cause us to persevere in mm -hmm. our faith. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to everyday things, we doubt. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing to me. Yeah. We trust him in the big things, but yeah. yet when it comes to the little things, and yeah. if you have enough of those little things, mm -hmm. They frustrate you in your mm -hmm. walk with God mm -hmm. and hinder you from, from, from growing. Mm -hmm. But we somehow, we don't seem to produce that evidence. Yeah, and, and, and you are right in saying that. I think that at times, again, we are looking at the wrong thing. Rather than focusing on God and what he can do, because his word tells us that, we focus on the giants right. in our lives. And so it becomes a point where we're like, okay, I don't know if this can happen, but we have to forget, but we, we, we just went to church on Sunday and we, we served a God and we gave praises to our God. But yet when we are away from the church and reality hits, then we struggle with that. Yeah. Again, you go about to the doubting and things. Where is that yeah. strong faith? Um, that should be there to say, my God can do it. Yeah, and that's, and you know, mm -hmm. I think that's precisely why he, for example, we have uh, Hebrews chapter 11 mm -hmm. with, uh, with, uh, with the, the Faith Hall of Fame. Yes. I mean, these characters aren't there to elevate the characters themselves. Mm -hmm. These characters are there to show us and teach us, teach us. that God is a promise-keeping God mm -hmm. and that he can, mm -hmm. he's powerful enough, mm -hmm. big enough, mm -hmm. to sovereign mm -hmm. over the universe to deliver on his promises. Okay. And, and, you, and you talk about the promise now, and we have to understand that his word will not come back void, mm -hmm. but it's going to accomplish everything that it was sent out to do. Mm -hmm. And another thing is that it has in Hebrews that, you know, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we have our religious activities going mm -hmm. on. But if you don't have that faith in place, um, you know, it's still impossible to please them without right. it. Right. That's yeah. why it's commanded and that's yeah. why we are supposed to. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Job is a great illustration mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of the evidence of faith. I mean, most of us or, you know, uh, most of us know the story of Job. We know that Job mm -hmm. uh, had essentially Satan had come to God and, and had told God that the only reason Job believed him and had faith in him was because he prospered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, God 
in order to demonstrate mm -hmm. that man has the capacity within his, in his own will to choose to follow God in spite of his circumstances allowed mm -hmm. Satan to essentially strip him strip from him everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I was going to look at a passage in Job, Job 19. Uh, we know what happened in the life of Job. Mm -hmm. We know that Job lost essentially everything. Mm -hmm. uh, his health had suffered, mm -hmm. family members had died, mm -hmm. his wealth vanished. Uh, yet in spite of all that, mm -hmm. I want to look at uh, Job 19:25 through 27. Mm -hmm. In spite of all of that, listen to what Job said. I know that my Redeemer lives, mm -hmm. and that in the end He will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. Mm -hmm. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another, how my heart yearns within me. Mm -hmm. In spite mm -hmm. of the circumstances, mm -hmm. he believed God and he believed the promise of God to be of far greater value than everything he had at one time possessed. Exactly. Now we know he recovered mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. God prospered him again mm -hmm. because he proved his faith in God. He proved it. He proved his faith in God. And again that proven was more of a pruning and, and oh, testing. Absolutely. And that's why he was able to say this uh, that you know he knew that his Redeemer lives because we, we know what God had given him but he also believed that if he did not have God will still be the same God that will bless him. Absolutely. And so basically, and we understand at the end of that chapter that he gave him a double blessing. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, this is, this is, I mean, we could, we could spend a, a lot of t mm -hmm. time talking about these two mm -hmm. uh, different things. There's another passage I wanted to look at, uh, uh, Wesley. Mark chapter 9 and verse 23. <coughs> Listen to what Jesus said. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for him who believes. Now, belief mm. here is equated with faith mm -hmm. because most of the promises mm. are future promises mm -hmm. that we won't even experience until we are in his presence. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we, we've sort of reached the end of this particular program. We have uh, about 30 or 40 seconds left. Mm -hmm. uh, Wesley, do you have something you would like to share with the audience directly? Okay. Well, as we talk about this topic here, uh, faith under construction, uh, one of the things that you do have to understand that it is a, a process. Uh, we don't wake up the next morning and we are there. Uh, matter of fact, all of us, uh, are still, um, c our faith is, is really being constructed uh, as we speak. Um, but do understand that God is a spirit of his word. If he says he's going to do, he's going to do it. And we have to understand that what may be impossible for man is possible with God. There's nothing too hard for me if you just believe and understand that he is who he say he is. Thank you, Wesley. Uh, we've come to the end of this program. Uh, please tune in next week, and we will continue this discussion with Minister Wesley Blunt, Jr. Thank you. Thank you.